I'm gonna do in this video is just talk about compound interest. And I wanna explore it from a more analytical perspective than the perspective that you've probably heard it talked about um, just you know in everyday life. So there's some very, very generic advice that's very good advice from my opinion about retirement. And this advice goes like this. Take 10% of your annual salary, invest it in low cost index funds, like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100 or whatever, you know, and you do that through ticker SPY or QQQ. And you're going to do that for every single year until you retire. So what does it actually look like? Um, if we have the year right here, we have a 7% interest rate, which is um, accounting for inflation. And in you're going to take 10% of your post-tax income and you're going to contribute it to a retirement account and you're going to receive an additional um, you're going to receive an additional um, match from your employer on the first five percent that you contribute so if you contribute two thousand you receive another two thousand from your employer and then you have an additional two thousand from the the ten percent that you're putting away of your salary of your post-tax salary so over here, what you can see is um, this exact chart, and you can see the total increase over time until um, we're saying this is if this was retirement age. And you can see that if you collect, if you start contributing, you're going to start receiving checks every single year. And what you're going to see is that these checks increase over time, and that by the time you retire, you're actually making twenty-four thousand dollars a year by just holding on to this money. Now, if we come over here, what we see is if you go ahead and instead of just collecting these dividends every single month and you actually reinvest them in something called a dividend reinvestment plan or DRIP investing, um, you can see that your dividends are approximately, it's almost double, your dividend income is almost double what you would get um, as if you were to just, if you were to just, um, collect your dividends every year. So that's in, in the other thing is that your principal is actually almost double as well. The total amount of money that you have after you're done. Now, let's say that you want to be a little bit more aggressive in your approach to investing. Now, instead of just taking 10% of your salary, let's say that you want to take 50% of your post-tax salary of the average salary. That'd be around we're assuming maybe you're paying 20% in taxes, so $50,000 salary turns into $40,000 a year, and somehow, aggressively, you're gonna save 50% of that, and you're gonna invest it. So, what would that look like? Now, assuming that you reinvested um, that money, it would look a little bit different than this. Right, it would actually look something like this, where, you're making, by the time you retire, if you reinvest these dividends instead of collecting them, by the time you retire, you'll have $138,000 a year in passive dividend income. While as having a principal of around um, $7 million. And we're assuming, right, we're, we're assuming inflation is 3% and you're investing this in an index fund, which is getting 10% a year. So the nominal amount of money that you would have if we calculate this real quick, we could see that the nominal amount of money that you would have by the time you retire um, is absolutely insane, right? So $17 million, $17 million in net worth, and you have um, a passive income of $328,000 a year. Now, of course, um, you know, that's that number doesn't mean any. That much this is the number that actually means something because you'll have seven million dollars of today's buying power and 138 thousand um, dollars of today's buying power so that's interesting now let's look at another salary chart where we look at an individual who had um, a high high income earner who was um, conscious and very disciplined with their investing and same same assumptions over here, 7%, 50 years. At year after 40 years of investing, you're gonna retire in your early 60s. 
um, you know, what we see right here is without dividend reinvesting, um, this high income earner is actually without, without drip investing. Um, I'll, I'll show you in a second what it looks like with drip investing, but it's actually making around the same amount of money as someone who did the exact same thing, but didn't reinvest their dividends, which is, which is crazy. So reinvesting your dividends nearly doubles the net worth and it also doubles the, the dividend income because the dividend income is just a percentage, 1.9% of the um, total amount of money you have. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll look at what this looks like with dividends reinvested. And what we can see is that nearly $277,000 a year in passive dividend income with a net worth of $14 million. And that is what uh, investing, it, very, very disciplined investing, 40% of your money, I'm sorry, 50% of your post-tax income year after year after year until you retire is going to Maybe all this does is it, maybe it is incredibly impractical to save 50% of your post-tax income year after year after year. Um, you know, especially if you're living on $50,000 a year with a family. If anything, looking at these different scenarios and savings rates has just absolutely inspired me to save and to see just how much saving money early on really, really matters. And... You know, you can even, like if we just delete all of these contributions from then on, you can see your principal doesn't change that much. It's really these early years that matter a lot, and it's also the interest rate that matters a lot. So if anything, this just goes to illustrate the importance of drip investing, and not only investing and being conservative and um, investing as much of your money as you reasonably can, but also the idea that you know dividends have a profound effect on the amount of money that you have and it's so important to just put those dividends and reinvest them almost half of the compounding that's done is done from just this 1.9 percent um in dividends that's being reinvested every single year so i hope this video was helpful in explaining maybe the investment process and what it looks like from a more mathematical perspective. Um, thank you for watching.